Hey everybody, Dr. Retzek here. This is our intro video to section 6C on orthogonal complements. Let's get started. So the setting is what it's been throughout chapter 6. So you have this big box full of stuff. This is a vector space V and it's equipped with an inner product. So it makes this an inner product space, equipped with some kind of inner product. Nothing in particular, just meets the definition of inner product. The idea of orthogonal complement is an idea we've been circling around a little bit, actually. You guys have that weekly homework problem where you were trying to find all the vectors in P2 orthogonal to a specific polynomial. This is some sort of an abstract extension of that idea. So here's how it works. You got a subset sitting inside your inner product space V, say like this. Now notice the choice of words there. I said subset, not subspace. You can formulate this notion of orthogonal complement for any subset sitting inside your inner product space. Now it'll turn out that for us most of the time, this will be most useful when we think of U as being a subspace. But in terms of the definition, all we need is a subset. Now you can look in this box and you can go to each vector in V, say this vector here, and you can ask whether that vector v is orthogonal to everything in u. If it is, then you include it in what is called the orthogonal complement of u. If it's not, if there's certain things in u that v is not orthogonal to, it just doesn't get thrown in. So that leads us to this definition. Definition. Given a subspace, U of inner product space V, the orthogonal complement. Now, this is complement as in set complement, not complement as in, hey, nice subspace. So that's with E after the L, not I, is, here's how you denote it. So you write down U and then you superscript it with this perpendicularity symbol. And that total symbol there, U along with the superscript, that's actually pronounced U perp. So we say U perp. So the orthogonal complement is U perp. And its definition is, it's all the V's in big V such that V U comes out zero for all vectors U in U. In other words, U perp is all the vectors perpendicular to every vector in U. Okay, so that's our definition. <clears throat> right off the bat, you can see that there's at least one thing in U perp. Think about that one thing. No matter what the setting, think up a vector in V that is for sure orthogonal to literally everything in U. It doesn't even matter what U is. What vector do you have in mind? The zero vector, I suspect. So, U-perp's never empty. And furthermore, because we have additivity and homogeneity in the first slot, if little v belongs to U-perp, so does five little v. And if little v and little w belong to U-perp, so does v plus w. 
In other words, uperp is a subspace. Even if u itself was merely a subset, uperp is for sure a subspace. And that's the first of a number of basic properties of the orthogonal complement. So let's just write these down. So I'm gonna call this list basic properties of uperp. This is theorem 6.46, I think, in the book. Anyway, the first property is, we just noted it, property one, uperp is a subspace of V. Where again, it doesn't matter whether U is or not. As long as U is a subset, uperp is a subspace. Okay, fantastic. Uh, second basic property, this is a matter of just keeping our wits and using the definition. What if we were interested in zero perp? So in this instance, the red subset in this drawing up here has one thing in it, just zero. And if you were interested in gathering up all the vectors, orthogonal, to zero, what would you gather up? You'd have the entire box, because anything inner product with zero comes out to zero. Okay, so zero perp is the whole thing. Symmetrically, what if the red blob was the entire box and so you were interested in v perp? Now you're trying to gather up all the vectors that are orthogonal to literally everything. Well, there's only one vector perpendicular to everything because it would have to be perpendicular to itself. And that's the zero vector. So v perp is tiny and zero perp is huge. Next easy property. Let's think about the intersection. What if we got interested in u intersect with u perp? Okay. Let's see here. Well, if you were in both, then you would have to be orthogonal to yourself. Like imagine a vector that was simultaneously in U and in U perp. Well, it's in U perp because it's perpendicular to everything in U and it is one of the things in U. So it would have to be perpendicular to itself. It would have to be orthogonal to itself. And you know there's only one vector that does that, the zero vector. So we've proven this set containment. I like to read that as, at most, they share zero in common. They might share nothing in common. What if the red blob didn't even have the zero vector in it? If it was merely a subset, that's possible. And if the red blob didn't have zero in it, then u and u perp would literally share nothing in common. Okay, but certainly, at most, the zero vector is in common to both. All right, now let's think about adding another blob to the picture. What if we had this drawing instead? So there's our inner product space V. Here's U. And here is W. So U is a subset of W. And now we want to think about how U perp and W perp sit relative to one another. So let's think about that. If U 
sits inside W, then, okay, hang on a sec. So this is a matter of sort of subset logic. Imagine that you had a vector V orthogonal to everything in W. So V is orthogonal to everything in the green blob. Well, the red blob sits inside the green blob. So if V is orthogonal to everything in the green, it's orthogonal to everything in the red. In other words, if V belongs to W perp, then V belongs to U perp. So W perp is a subset of U perp. And note the change of order. Here, U sat inside W, thus W perp sits inside U perp. Okay, so basically what we have cooking right now is this idea of taking a subset of an inner product space and finding all the stuff orthogonal to everything in it. This complementary set, this U perp, will be useful to us eventually in section 6c as we solve some really interesting minimization problems. For now, it's just a basic definition about this picture. And we know that this perp idea comes with a bunch of straightforward sort of intro properties. And that gets us up through 6.46. And that's actually it for this short video. So make sure your reading is on point up through 6.46. We will start to investigate orthogonal complements a little more deeply in the next video for section 6C. Okay, I'll see you next time. Bye.